Good evening. Welcome to the June 11th meeting of the City Council's Committee on Finance. I am uh, City Councilor Stan Moulton. Uh, in the absence of Chair Rachel Maori, I will be presiding at this uh, meeting, which is being um, audio and video recorded. Laura, call the roll, please. Sure. Um, and as you announced, Councilor Maori is absent. So, Councilor Moulton. Here. Councilor Elkins. And Councillor Labarge. Yeah. Other oh, voices are low. Thank you, Laura. So we have uh, Councillor uh, Labarge and myself in the room. Councillor Elkins uh, is on on Zoom, and uh, I see one other councillor on Zoom. Welcome, Councillor Dubs, and there are several other. Uh, and Councillor Jarrett, welcome as well, and also welcome to uh, a couple of other people who are here. Uh, we. Uh, we'll offer uh, public comment at the beginning if anyone is here to comment uh, on either the uh, Community Preservation Act uh, programs, projects that are before us tonight. We will be hearing about them and issuing recommendations, or you may comment on any financial issue that is uh, appropriate for the Finance Committee. So I will, I see... Uh, I see two hands. There's nobody in the room, so I will call first on uh, uh, Gayla. Yes, thank you. If you could, if you could uh, give us your your name and your place of residence and uh, uh, two minutes, please. Sure. My name is Gayla Berry. I'm here in Northampton, and I'm here tonight to ask for your support in funding a public good. Playground for all. Playgrounds are quintessential childhood experiences and their developmental benefits cannot be overstated. An accessible and inclusive playground invites all abilities to participate and to learn and grow in healthy and important ways. Since my child was young, we've been traveling down to West Hartford, Connecticut so that she could access a playground. Over the years on this playground, I've watched her develop physical abilities like strength, coordination, and balance, socio-emotional skills such as cooperation, self-regulation, and confidence, and cognitive skills like problem solving, decision making, and communication. Really, in essence, I've watched her develop life skills in a fun and meaningful way. Inclusive and accessible playgrounds don't just benefit individuals. They are real assets to communities. They bring locals together and they draw people in from outside the community, bringing dollars to the local economy. When we go to West Hartford, we go out to eat, we might go to a shop or a market, we leave money there. And as Northampton strives to attract people from outside here to bring money into our community, an all abilities playground is a draw. My family asks that you support this project, Playground for All. Thank you. Thank you, Gayla. Uh, uh, Councillor Dubs. Uh, can you unmute him, please? <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Sorry about that. Okay, can you hear me now? You. Yes, we can. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, hello, fellow counselors and, and Laura. It's good to see you all. Um, I'm here tonight to speak in support of the Ryan Rhodes Elementary School Playground for All. Um, so uh, just a little background on, on my, my life. Um, I got my first wheelchair in 1983 when I was five years old. So I went through all of elementary school uh, as a wheelchair user and um, and I, and I, um, you know, one thing I've been thinking about in terms of uh, building this, this playground is that um, sometimes we, we don't even know what we're missing out on until someone presents a possibility to us. And uh, back in, back when I was uh, 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 that young, <clears throat> it didn't even, you know, occur to me or my family that something like this was possible. So um, just to even hear that, that this is something that's on the table for Northampton, I just have to say I'm 100% in support of it, and I hope that the Finance Committee um, will give a positive recommendation 
for the playground for all. Uh, I think it would be a life cha life changing experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Dubs. I'm going to pause here for a moment because someone has entered the room. Do you wish to make a public comment? Please, I am from Laser. Uh, did you? Okay, is there still a mic up there? Yes. Okay. Uh, would you come to the podium, please, and just give us your name and uh, your community of residence? Yes. Make sure that the green button uh, is. Yep, it looks uh, like it is green. So can I be heard? Well, we we can hear you, but the microphone is so that people who are okay, yeah, sitting remotely I mean. can hear you. I'm not sure this is live. No, well, they don't. They don't. Uh, oh, it doesn't ding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't okay. project. It's for the remote. All right, yeah. Sites. All right. And if you could uh, just limit your comments to two minutes, please. Okay. Thank you. My name is Barbara Walvard. I'm representing the Lathrop community, which has two campuses, as you know, one on Bridge Road in Northampton, and one in East Hampton, which has, however. 11 some point something acres of CR land managed by the city of Northampton. And I'm here to speak in behalf of our proposal to both cities for money to remove invasive plants from woods and fields and stream beds in a total between the two cities of 103 acres of CR land, 26 of them belonging to Northampton all of them contiguous to other conserved land here in Northampton, contiguous to the Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area. Our request from Northampton is $19,000. The city of East Hampton, we made a much larger request, and they are in the process of considering that request, and we'll hear it for the final time on June 20, and we'll make their decision at that time. The one thing you need to know about removing invasives is that invasive plants significantly reduce wildlife when they dominate. They can do so by up to 75% because they crowd out the native plants, which our native wildlife has evolved to use. So invasive plants represent a huge threat nationally, statewide, and to us at Lathrop. And this is our attempt at Lathrop, based on 10 years of effort by volunteer residents and by management and by those who support us, and by the Kestrel Land Trust, which holds our East Hampton um, CR, are all collaborating to bring this proposal to remove invasive plants and thereby nurture native plants in these 26 acres of Northampton CR and 103 acres total. I'll be happy to answer any questions about the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Okay, uh, Barbara is the only person in the room, so we'll go back to online and I'll just uh, repeat if you could give your name and uh, place of residence, please. Rebecca LeBeau. Good evening. My name is Rebecca LeBeau and I live in Chicopee. I am currently the interim principal and will be the permanent principal at Ryan Road Elementary School next year. Um, I want to speak tonight for the Ryan Road Playground for All. I want to echo Councillor Dubs and Gala's statements, which were beautifully spoken. By approving these funds for the inclusive playscape, you are equipping children and staff of all abilities with inclusive environments and the skills to play together more independently. This will also allow students to feel nurtured, encouraged, respected, and active during play, both physically and socially, thereby creating a sense of community among all children. We currently have one um, adaptive piece that we've had gotten funds for, and uh, it, it's so great to see our students that um, of all abilities, be able to use that together and to give them the opportunity to have a full playscape, not just one piece of equipment, would be such um, an honor to have that at our building. So uh, thank you for your consideration tonight in approving those funds. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Uh, Jacob Drew.
Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Jacob Drew. Uh, I live in Florence, Massachusetts. I'm here in support of the Playgrounds for All at Ryan Road. Um, my son uh, uses a wheelchair. Um, we recently moved here from Los Angeles, where we would travel um, to places that had accessible playgrounds. Um, and I can't say enough about how important they were um, for him when he was growing up. He's going into high school next year, so he's a little past the playground age, uh, but during his younger years, um, it gave him an opportunity to play and be included in ways that he wasn't always. Um, I, I don't think you can really appreciate, um, you know, just how painful it is to take a kid to a playground um, and watch them not be able to play and watch them uh, basically be excluded from what all of the other kids are doing. Um, and that's a problem that we can solve. Uh, you can't solve all of these problems. You can't really, um, you know, make him not, um, I guess, deal with the, the, the issues that come with having a disability. Um, but this one we can, we can make a real dent in and we can really, I think, not just change like their playtime, but you know, give them experiences that really in these formative years uh, can be life changing. Um, you can give them confidence. Uh, you can give kids, um, you know, the chance to feel more integrated with their peers. And it's not only great for kids who have uh, disabilities; it's great for kids who don't, um, who learn what it means to. Um, be a part of an inclusive environment and to foster inclusion with their peers um, and learn that, you know, it's not that, that, that kids with disabilities are not on the sidelines because they want to be. Um, it's because there are impediments to their access and removing those impediments is a great lesson for all children. Um, so I echo what the other folks have said more eloquently than I ever could. Um, and I just want to throw my my two cents behind the playgrounds for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Uh, Amy Sugahara, please. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Amy Sugihara, and I live in Florence. And I'm here to speak um, uh, in support of the playground for all as well. Um, I don't feel like I have too much to add beyond Jacob, Jeremy, and Gayla, who all spoke very beautifully and poignantly. Um, uh, I'm also here, sorry, I'm also here as the chair of the Northampton Disability Commission. Um, we spoke about it briefly at the meeting today. Um, I, I do just two points, you know, that have already kind of been highlighted, but being able to use a playground as a child is a ubiquitous experience. It should be a ubiquitous experience. And to have the opportunity to provide that to kids in our community and nearby communities, um, is it's an amazing opportunity. And it's a way that we as a city can do better and so I strongly urge you to fully support it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Sarah Pudgen. Hi there. I'm Sarah. <laughs> I live in Florence, Massachusetts, and I'm here to advocate for the Ryan Road School Playground for All. Um, I was... Um, my name is on the, the grant, the CPA grant for this. Um, and our vision was really to create an accessible and inclusive playground um, for the Northampton community. And um, I think it's been well said that this is this is missing right now in our city. Um, it Rhine Road already hosts um, Northampton Youth Football and the Northampton Little League, um, the League Legends Basketball Courts. And it's already 
a um, community <clears throat> locate a location that the community collects for recreational activities. So it would really be a statement of, of inclusivity to situate an accessible playground in this location. Um, our vision for the playground um, was one that adheres to universal design. So it enables and empowers a diverse population of people and children and families to all have access to the same area. Um, and that will support their health and wellness, creativity and social participation in their community. Um, our design addresses accessible and protective ground surfacing, um, accessible entry and exit points, transfer points and ramped pathways. Um, we have rich sensory opportunities that include movement, sound, color, and tactile experience included there. A wide range of variability to support developmentally appropriate play. Um, seating options and access to shade and places for gathering for communal eating and also a visual communication board that supports um, multimodal forms of communication for children. Um, currently, families in Northampton travel outside of our city to find accessible play spaces. Um, Jessica's Boundless Playground in Belchertown is an example of an amazing playground um, that many families travel to. And we think that there should be something within our Northampton community um, for, our, for our families. Um, this project also, I think, aligns with the Northampton's ADA transition plan of 2020. Um, and <clears throat> the goal of that plan is to renew commitment and compliance with the Title II um, American with Disabilities Act and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the 10 priority recommendations made by the report references improving the accessibility of parks and open spaces as identified in that plan. Um, so by moving this project forward with full funding, um, we will be serving our city's capacity of providing equitable um, and equal access to people with disabilities and recreational and open spaces. Um, I think this is a really crucial project in our city becoming more ADA compliant. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Andrea Gito, please. Hello, my name is Andrea Gito, and I teach kindergarten at Ryan Road Elementary School. And I want to thank the council for hearing this proposal. And I am so appreciative of the um, the CPA committee for recommending it to you. This is truly a wonderful addition or will be a wonderful addition to our city. This is truly a playground for all. And I don't want to repeat all of the eloquent and wonderful things that everyone has said before. And Sarah has really lined lined out, uh, laid out our whole vision for this project. But I, I just want to add the fact that having an inclusive playground is going to be something that not only is beneficial and priceless for students with disabilities, but it is also bringing those students in with their peers. So this will be a gift to the students that are able-bodied and don't necessarily have the opportunity to be on a playground with their friends who may not be able to join them on a play structure. So this is really a, um, a situation where all children are going to benefit from the inclusivity. It mm -hmm. has sensory um, components that are not just for students that are challenged in their mobility, but also cognitively and being able to, or um, other senses like vision and hearing. And this adds so many pieces to a school playground that is really going to help every child and every caregiver. Many times caregivers have mobility issues and they can't join their child on a playground because they can't get to it. And so the way this playground is being designed is it is going to allow all families to join together and all students to be able to experience that joy of being on a playground. And I just want to add the League Legends basketball court is a basketball court that allows for um, disabled people to play basketball in, you know, the 
the hoops raise and uh, lower. And that was something that was really well thought out as well in that project. So this is a perfect location for the playground for all to add to our city and bringing families from even surrounding towns, just like our families currently go elsewhere to find an inclusive playground. So hopefully they'll be coming here to Northampton. So thank you so much for your consideration and generosity. Thank, thank you, Andrea. Uh, Samantha? Uh, Samantha Vane. I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. All right. I don't know if you can see me. My internet is very spotty right now for some reason. Um, so I apologize. But um, can you see me or just hear me? Well, we can hear you. And that's the most oh, important thing. That's we're going to go with it. So my name is Samantha Vane. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist and coordinator of the wheelchair clinic through the Mass General Hospital System at Cooley Dickinson. Um, I work with hundreds of individuals in our community every year to support their mobility needs um, from pediatrics all the way through older adulthood. Um, and I really want to throw my support towards um, this playground. I don't think I can say anything that hasn't already been said, which is wonderful. Um, but the bottom line from my perspective and my profession um, is that we need a, a wonderful and safe place for all children to be able to engage with their peers in a way that feels really good for them. That doesn't say, oh, well, you know, the kids in the wheelchairs can go to this section and the kids who are able to climb can go over here because that's just not inclusive. And that's not the model that we're trying to um, create. And that's not the community we're trying to create. We want to cr uh, create a community for all Northampton community members. Um, and as Ms. Ajito said, they're caregivers. Loads of grandparents want to be able to take their their grandchildren while they're watching them or while they're raising them to a local playground that they themselves can access. And um, anecdotally, I had a 17-year-old come into a wheelchair clinic um, this morning who said, I'm really struggling to make friends. I don't really know where to meet other wheelchair users who are this young. And I, I don't really know where to start. I'm not confident with using this wheelchair. And um, just kind of where, where do I go? And it really stumped me because having a place like this, I could say, oh, well, go to the playground and meet the other kids in the community and meet the caregivers in the community. And as Ms. Ajito said, go play basketball. Um, and I did recommend that they contact All Out Adventures, which is a Northampton uh, program, because that's a wonderful social program that will be able to use this space at Ryan Road to support their participants as well. So I think the net just gets wider and wider for our community members that we're able to support and engage and mobilize and just find joy in being outdoors. And as a Ryan Road parent, I think it would be an amazing experience for my children to grow up in a place that supports all students. And I think that that's very important as a parent as well. That's all. Thank you so much for your yeah. consideration. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Okay, uh, the last hand I see is a screen that's identified as Restless Books. Hi, uh, my name is Jennifer. Um, I'm a resident of Florence, and um, I have three kids. One is going into the high school next year. I have one at Leeds, and then one who is going to be a kindergartner at Leeds. Uh, my oldest kiddo is a kid who uses a wheelchair. And um, one thing I learned as a parent is that inclusivity starts early. Um, kids who grow up around diversity will grow up respecting diversity and asking for it. So I think um, while we have a really long way to go to make Northampton fully accessible as uh, a town, I think we have this opportunity to make one of our elementary schools fully accessible um, to all children, and we should take it. So I just wanted to add my two cents. There's been a lot of 
amazing stuff said here tonight, but as a parent, um, I'd be very grateful for had this happen for kids in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Jennifer. You. Uh, there are no new observers in the room, and I, I, I don't see any further new hands. Uh, any phone calls? No. No. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I think we've heard from everybody who wanted to speak. Thank you all for offering your uh, perspectives. Uh, we have no minutes, correct, Laura? So we will now uh, move on to our main order of business, which is to hear from Sarah LaValle, who is uh, the Assistant Director of the Office of Planning and Sustainability and the expert city's expert on community preservation and uh, i've asked sarah to give us a just to introduce this by uh, giving us an overview of the process that was used to arrive at these nine projects that have been referred uh, to the city council and that we will make recommendations on tonight and the cpa program in general sarah lavalley Sure. Uh, so welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, I have the pleasure of staffing the Community Preservation Committee, which is a... Uh, I can't hear her. Which is a nine-member committee. It's not of... you. It's not turned up good. Oh, okay. Let's pause for a moment. It, do you have your... You've got your aid, right? Your... Yes, it's yes. up. Okay. Is there any anything we can do, Laura, to... Assist. She does. It. He did it before. Remember, uh, she I don't she put it right up. The volume on the system itself. Um, I don't know any way to. Um, That's one thing. Well, we would it help if would it help if Sarah were right beside you, on that yeah, side? What? Would it help, Councillor, if Sarah Lavalley were yeah. right beside you? Yes. Sarah, would you mind? Not at all. I'm just happy I don't have to stand for the whole meeting. Thank you, Sarah. We have to learn how to turn this thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> he did a beautiful job. She did that last time. She went in the back and turned it up. Okay. All right. Here, Thank I you. Better? Yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, so I'm Sarah LaValle. Um, I have the pleasure of staffing the Community Preservation Committee, which is a really dedicated group of um, nine Northampton residents. Uh, and they worked hard this funding round to review all of these applications and um, get these recommendations to you. So just a, a quick overview of the CPA, what it is, what it does, and how we got here. The Community Preservation Act, or Chapter 44B of the Massachusetts General Laws, allows communities to create a local community preservation fund uh, through a surcharge of up to 3% of the real estate tax levy on real property. The act also creates um, a, a state matching fund uh, that provides additional disbursements to communities. CPA funds may be used for acquisition and preservation of open space, for preservation and restoration of historic buildings and artifacts, for the creation, preservation, and support of community housing, and for acquisition, creation, preservation, and rehabilitation of land for recreational use. In each fiscal year, at least 10% of the revenues in the Community Preservation Fund must be spent or set aside for future spending for open space, including recreational uses, 10% for historic preservation, and 10% for community housing. The CPA stipulates that decisions regarding the allocation of CPA funds and cities and towns that adopt the initiative are to be made by a local community preservation committee or the CPC, whose task is to receive and review applications and to make recommendations to city council, which in turn makes the final allocation. Uh, and the history of the CPA in Northampton is that it was um, approved by voters by ballot referendum in November, 2005. Uh, at the 3% level of property tax assessment, that's the maximum that, that can be um, can be allocated, and that also provides some additional state matching funds. The City Council then drafted and adopted an ordinance creating the Community Preservation Committee, and following that, a ballot question proposing repeal of the CPA uh, in Northampton was, was defeated resoundingly in November 2011. The Northampton CPC consists of nine members, including one representative each from the Conservation Commission, 
Historical Commission, Housing Authority, Planning Board, Parks and Rec, as well as one member appointed by City Council, one member appointed by the Mayor, and two representatives elected in a citywide election. And in January 2024, the CPC began reviewing project proposals submitted for Community Preservation Act funding consideration this round. And after extensive review that included applicant presentation, site visits, extensive public comment sessions and deliberation, the CPC voted to recommend nine funding requests that um, are before you tonight, totaling um, just under one and a half million. These projects include all of the eligible CPA project areas, uh, historic preservation, recreation, affordable housing, and open space. And the CPA funding being recommended will leverage more than $22 million in funding from other sources. And this follows uh, just over 1.4 million for six projects that were recommended by the committee and approved by city council in the fall. These recommendations will exhaust the available fiscal year 2024 CPA funds. Um, CPA funds are a special revenue fund that is separate from the city's general budget uh, and can only be allocated to eligible community preservation projects. Since its adoption, CPA funds have been allocated to more than 175 projects in Northampton, including preservation of hundreds of, ac of acres of open space and agricultural land, creation of more than 200 units of affordable housing, creation of many miles of multi-use trails and new recreational fields and facilities across the city, and restoration of more than 30 historic resources and structures. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, so uh, this is how I propose that we uh, proceed. I will read uh, the orders and um, Laura will screen share so that everybody uh, who is participating remotely can see uh, exactly what we're discussing. And then we'll, uh, Sarah will give any background uh, that she wants to about each of the uh, projects and answer our questions. And I think rather than voting on them individually as we go through them, we'll wait until the end. And at the end, we can consider whether we want to vote a positive recommendation or whatever recommendation as a group, or we can vote on them individually then. Does that make sense? I feel better doing it individually. You, well, okay. We can do that at the end. I think, is that, is that okay? I mean, we can make that decision at, at, after we've heard about all of them. Just fine. Okay. I mean, the presentations will be individual, right? I'm sorry. Council, council I mean, the, yes, each pre each, each we, one will be presented individually, yes. right? So. Yes. Yes. Okay. So first up is uh, twenty four zero eight zero. In order to appropriate seven hundred twenty thousand in CPA funds for Ryan Road School Playground for All. Uh, whereas the Ryan Road School submitted an application for Community Preservation Act funding for creation of an inclusive playground at the Ryan Road School, whereas a new playground is necessary to replace the existing playground that will soon no longer be usable due to age-related corrosion and surface failure, whereas the project will create a playground that is accessible and inclusive to all, including children and caregivers of varying cognitive, sensory, and social-emotional abilities, whereas the playground has widespread support and will contribute to positive health status of residents and enhance quality of life, whereas on April 17, 2024, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend that $720,000 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, be it ordered that $720,000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Ryan Road School for the Playground for All project, and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and the City Council, specifically that pursuant to the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, and in addition to other amounts appropriated, therefore, the sum of $720,000 thousand dollars is hereby appropriated from the community preservation fund to pay costs of design and construction of a playground located at the ryan rose school in order to make it more functional for its intended use and any costs incidental and related thereto that to meet this appropriation the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 444 b section 11 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, 
that the mayor is authorized to take any action necessary or convenient to carry out the school playground project. So, Sarah, we heard a lot of testimony during public comment about the specifics of the playground. Is there anything else that you would you like to add to that? Yeah, I, I can't speak as eloquently as everyone who's spoken about the benefits of this project and the incredible amount of community support that it had. Um, this was enthusiastically recommended by the Community Preservation Committee. You know, the, the equity and the necessity of, of this was or just hit the window was uh, uh was was you know was really it was really important to them and um they were happy to recommend bonding um to the city council for this project um and this is being recommended for borrowing for the full amount of the the cost of the playground and the accessible surface and that will allow it to be completed all at once um to ensure that it's open sooner and also resulting in a, a long-term cost savings Thank you. Councillors. Want us to speak about it? Please. Thank you. I will. I sent a letter to the um, Community Preservation Commission and members on February 11th, 2024, and I had contact with some of the teachers who had asked me to come in and support this project. I'm going to read it off exactly what I presented. Dear committee members, as a city councilor in Ward 6, I was also a, do a donor for the first playground at Ryan Road Elementary School, which was not accessible to children at Ryan Road School or in the community. I was also a sponsoring donor for the new basketball court at Ryan Road Elementary School, League Legends worked tirelessly with donations and fundraising to help make the court what it is. The League Legends basketball court is used frequently by children at Ryan Road Elementary School and in the community during basketball season. It is amazing that our children at Ryan Road School who are disabled in wheelchairs now can take a little button and impress it with their wheelchairs and the hoop comes down and they can take that basketball and throw it into the hoop. I've seen it. Anyways, my two sons, Richard and Chris, also are graduates of Ryan Road Elementary School. They did, donated two bricks with their names on them, and I have a brick one with my name also, and there was a banner. I also received the from the previous principal, Principal Sarah Mading, a request to help her apply for a CPA funding for a piece of handicapped accessible playground equipment. This was a seesaw acquired through fundraising and CPA funding. I had been told that the children just loved the use of that new piece of accessible equipment. It makes me happy because we do have children throughout the community that need accessible playgrounds. And we're getting there at Ryan Road School. A lot of work is being put in to the CPA funding. I believe a playground for all is in dire need. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is a strong start for all children throughout Ryan Road Elementary School and throughout the community. I do agree with this commitment. I just feel it is a strong start for all children in our community to assess a good quality of life. I agree that the old and damaged playground at Ryan Road Elementary School should be replaced with an all-inclusive playground for all. An inclusive playground allows everyone to be present in any area of the playground to explore and grow together. I agree that we would like to secure funds 
to create a truly inclusive community experience that welcomes children and of all abilities and their families. I would like to support the playground for all project and hopefully create a truly inclusive community experience that welcome children in all abilities and their families. Just think, playing outside will support the physical, congenitive, social, and emotional development of all children. By fostering a playground for all at Ryan Road Elementary School, where every voice is heard, every perspective is valued, is valued, big word. And every opportunity is accessible, important, accessible. I feel it strives to create a future that shines bright for all, inspiring generations to come. I also thank the commission dearly for considering the use of CPA funds for this project, helping us the best you can to continue to move with this project. And I also questioned them to call me if they needed to talk with me. When I write something, it comes from my heart, no matter if it's Ryan Road School or all our elementary schools. The problem I have, we're looking at taxpayers in this city, taxpayers here, CPA money. Many of them from Ryan School throughout the city in our school systems are employees here and taxpayers. Here we have contractors. I'm using this as an example, my colleagues. As an example, coming in, builders, like we had with the Polish church, just as an example, $500,000. And they're not even taxpayers in our city. I saw articles in the paper, and I think, Sarah, you probably recall all this where I brought it up at the meetings that in Hoyo, these contractors built condos, sold them, and made over millions of dollars. None of that money they made could be used. They used our CPA money. So I feel when we have our taxpayers in this city, very valuable, very, very valuable teachers, educators, and the community, that's their taxpayers' money. And we need to look at this, a playground for all, all our children, no matter who they are and families, no matter if they come from East Stampton or wherever, the playground is welcome for all. I'm also being told there's rumors that eventually we might be looking at closing schools, whatever. That playground is there for all, for all to be used. I highly recommend this amount of money for a playground for all to be built at Ryan Road School. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Any more questions? Uh, no, thank you. Counselor Elkins. Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody who came and spoken in support and who um, you know, starting from the very beginning of the application process, letting us know on council what you were working toward and then seeing the process through. Um, it's a great project. So I don't have nearly as much to say as a uh, council at large, um, except for to say, I think it's a great project. I think it's a very appropriate and great use um, for our CPA funds. And uh, I, I look forward to it um, becoming a reality. So I'll be happy to approve it. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Sarah, what is the expected life of the playground? Uh, so the question, I guess, with more than one answer. So the expected or the the warranty lifespan of the playground surface was, um, I believe, ten years. Uh, but that's just how long it's warranted for. That doesn't mean that it will it will that yeah that it would fail at that point. Um, but you know as we've seen with the existing playground at Ryan Road School and as with other playgrounds around the city, they right. they do tend to be extended beyond their useful life. But it would be a, a matter of several decades that you would expect the playground to yeah, I, be 
I, I would expect that. Be in yeah. decent shape. Sure. So I think that uh, Councilor Labarge made a very good point that uh, we don't know what might happen to the Ryan Road School property in the future, but this is a playground that really is intended for the entire community, and it will be there for the community no matter how that property is, is used, whether it remains as a school or, or not. And I think that we're taking the opportunity to replace a right now a school playground that needs replacement with a very uh, special uh, uh, a facility that, um, you know, will will really give, we've heard from a number of people who spoke uh, tonight about uh, how they travel now That's quite it. some distance to use an accessible playground. Mm -hmm. And it will be right here in Northampton, and uh, it will really be an asset to the entire community. So I, too, am very, very enthusiastic about this project. Thank you, Councillor. I would like to make a positive recommend recommendation. Oh, oh, you, we all... oh, okay. Well, yes, I think we're all done on this. Do you want to to issue recommendations after we discuss each project? Do we want to do it that way, Council Labarge? Especially this one because some okay. of the families have children. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so... Council Moulton. Um, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Alex Jarrett has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, can't... I, uh, <laughs> I get so caught up in my colleagues who are here. Councillor Jarrett, not not overlooking you at all. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, this is a great project. I'm very excited about it. My question uh, was for Sarah Lavalli for about, could you explain a little bit more about why, what it means that we are bonding, that we are borrowing for it? Um, does it does it mean that we don't have the money set aside in our reserves or or that it's a, somehow more economical to do it that way? Sure. Uh, so the the rest of the uh, recommendations coming from the Community Preservation Committee that follow this one uh, will will exhaust the available CPA funds for this round. Um, the, the CPC thinks long and hard before making a recommendation for borrowing, uh, which will require payments from uh, future fiscal years, uh, community preservation reserves, um, but jumping on this opportunity to create this uh, the playground now all at once um, before construction costs go up was something that was important to them. I see. Okay, thank you for that. And I think the other point that Sarah made was that this will allow it to be uh, constructed more more quickly. Right. Correct. Um, okay. And and again, these will these payments will come from CPA funds. This doesn't yes. affect taxes in any other way. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. Thank you, President Jarrett. All right. So, Council Labarge is very anxious to uh, give a give a, a positive recommendation and has made a, a motion to do that on this project. Again. Okay. Councilor Elkins has seconded that. Any further discussion? Uh, a roll call on this on this positive recommendation on the Ryan Road School Playground for All. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, all the teachers and parents. Okay. Next up is... Uh, two stands. So, uh, yes. Uh, so that uh, passes unanimously with a positive recommendation and will go to the City Council on uh, June 20th. Okay. Next is 24081, uh, in order to appropriate 50000 in uh, CPA funds to Habitat for Humanity for an affordable home on Woodland Drive. Whereas Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity submitted an application for Community Preservation Act funding for creation of an energy efficient, affordable house on Woodland Drive, whereas Habitat for Humanity has an excellent record of creating housing throughout the Pioneer Valley and beyond, and the project has wide community support, leverages funding from many other sources, and utilizes volunteer labor, whereas the house will be permanently restricted to individuals and families earning 80% of area median income or below, whereas on April 18th, that's a different date. Is that correct, Sarah? The other one's April 17th. Um, they should all be the same. Okay, whereas, make sure to whereas on April 17th, 2024, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously 
to recommend that 50,000 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, it be ordered that $50,000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity for the Woodland Drive Affordable Home Project, and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and the City Council. Specifically, 50000 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve uh, and then the account number. Sarah. All right. Um, so what what can we say about Habitat? Habitat for Humanity is such an incredibly valued affordable housing development partner um, in Northampton, in the Pioneer Valley, and, and worldwide. They have such a unique model that involves future homeowners uh, as well as the, the whole community at large. Um, and this parcel was surplused by the city with council approval expressly for the purpose of affordable housing creation. And, and this also comes enthusiastically um, recommended by the Community Preservation Committee for support. Do you wanna mention any of the uh, other funds that are being leveraged? Uh... Uh, this one is heavily um, reliant on the, the work of donors, um, volunteers, um, and, and others, but there are, I believe, other state grants being leveraged, leveraged with this one as well, plus the value of the parcel that was surplus by the city. Right. Actually. Yes. <clears throat> Councilors, questions? Yes, yes. Councilor um, Barge. Yes, Habitat for Humanity on Woodland. We, Wayne Biden and I, Sarah, I think you were involved with several, several meetings that we had with the residents on Woodland. And we let them tell us what they wanted in that lot. And also, if they would think of joining their association also, which you pay a fee a year. So I think we had like about five meetings, Wayne and I and all the people living on Woodland they were very happy. I also had another resident on the corner of Woodland and West Stampton Road. And he wanted to know if he would be able to have a strip in the back of his property and buy it from the city. And Wayne worked on that very tirelessly, and we were able to do that and accommodate that resident, which would be abutting the lot for, for um, Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. Plus, the city also obtained another lot, and I forget what the acreage was on that one, which is buildable also. So is there a plan, sir, for the other lot besides? Uh, that one, I believe, is on the market. That one's if, on the market the, now? So what I'm thinking. Okay, because that money would be ours because somebody didn't buy that yet, right? No, I, I don't believe. No, I think it's on the market currently. Okay, all right. And you don't know what the price of that lot's going I, for? I do not. I, I would think have that one's else. bigger than what we're doing here, isn't it, for Pioneer Valley Habitat? I believe it is. Yeah, but I, I don't have so it. too. But anyways, it worked out very well. They've been very welcomed from the residents living on Woodland. So I was very happy that it turned out there. They're very welcome to have habitat there. At Ward 6, we have quite a bit of habitat that is being built and has been built. And people are so happy to have a home that they call theirs and affordable. So I really support this. I think it's opening the doors for affordable housing and they also have to do so many hours of helping build that house and having excellent credit. Some of them might have had a hard time, but they learn to build it back up by all the trainings and so, so forth they get. So I'm very happy. We got one again, a little bit further up from where I live by Woodland, which is 246. Two families in each one. Perfect. No problems. They're all happy. That's good to hear, Councillor. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, so, uh, Sarah, you, uh, the um, 
I, I happen to be talking to Megan McDonough, who's the director of Habitat um, Monday, and uh, she mentioned that this project is going to go forward starting this summer. So this is one that will be um, uh, will be we'll be seeing the actual construction soon. And uh, as you say, Habitat uh, has a terrific track record. So I too am happy to endorse this. Uh, so I also wanted to let the counselors know and the public, these lots were owned by one of my residents and apparently there was some taxes owed on it, and the city was willing, okay, to go ahead and say, all right, it was only like $5,000, and the lots were given to the city. So that's how this all happened. It was great, because that those lots were sitting there for years. Well, it's good to see that they're going to be put to use now. Thank exactly. you for that background, Council. Exactly. All right, so uh, do you want to issue recommendations here as we're going along, or do you want to? Yeah. Yes? Okay, well then we'll. Yes, I'd like to make a positive recommendation to full city council. Okay, a motion made by Council okay. Lamar, seconded by Council Elkins. Any further discussion? A roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. That uh, goes forward with a unanimous positive recommendation, and we'll go to this. City Council on June 20th. Next, we have 24082 in order to appropriate 300,000 in CPA funds for critical repairs and rehabilitation to Memorial Hall. <clears throat> Whereas Northampton Central Services submitted a CPA application for critical repairs and rehabilitation to Memorial Hall, including exterior foundation waterproofing, Masonry work and flashing and repointing, whereas the work will conform to the Secretary of the Interior's standards for historic rehabilitation and will contribute to securing the envelope of the 1872 historic public structure that is a critical component of the Downtown National Register District. Whereas on April 17, 2024, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend that 300000 and Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, it be it ordered that 300000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Northampton Central Services for Memorial Hall repair and rehabilitation, and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and City Council. Specifically, $130,088 is appropriated from the CPA Budgeted Reserve, and $169,912 is appropriated from the CPA Historic Reserve. So, Sarah, on this one, if you could just uh, explain a bit about how this money will uh, extend the uh, the work on Memorial Hall beyond what uh, w was done with that emergency appropriation that we the council approved earlier in the year. Sure. Uh, so this recommendation from the Community Preservation Committee is um, a partial funding of, of a much more substantial request that was several million dollars. Um, in, as I think all, everyone on the council knows that there's an in, incredible amount of work to be done at Memorial Hall. Uh, the CPC was able to see that firsthand in a site visit. You know, there, there's um, a multitude of issues that uh, Central Services was able to uh, highlight. Um, and this was this is an approximate match to the stabilization funds that were located in the spring and will allow the those funds to go a little bit further and get a little bit more work done. They were looking at how much was that first cost you said? Uh, it was um, the full request from central services was more than two million. And that that would be the full cost of the Memorial yeah. Hall project. Questions? Uh, no. Okay. Yep. Is there a motion for a recommendation? Yes, I would like to make a full recommendation to City Council. A positive recommendation. Positive. Second. Councilor Labarge, uh, move a positive recommendation. Seconded by Councilor Elkins. Any further discussion? Laura, roll call, please. Councilor 
Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Elkins. Yes. Okay, that positive recommendation is unanimous to go to the City Council on June 20th. We have 24083 in order to appropriate CPA funds for invasive species removal at the Lathrop community. Whereas the Lathrop community submitted an application for Community Preservation Act funding for continued priority invasive species removal at its north and east campuses, on both of which the city holds permanent conservation restrictions. Whereas the project will continue to help improve and preserve the health of sensitive habitats in the Parsons and Broadbrook watersheds, has strong community support and will continue to leverage private funds and extensive volunteer efforts. Whereas the applicant has welcomed public use of its popular trails and will continue to increase public knowledge of the trails on the property as part of this project, whereas on April 17, 2024, Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted to recommend that $19,131 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, be it ordered that $19,131 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Lathrop Communities for the Invasive Removal and Education Project, and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and the City Council. Specifically, $19,131 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. So, Sarah, we heard from uh, the representative from Lathrop Community a bit about this. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to add and particularly um, describe the, the conservation restrictions that the city holds. Sure. Uh, so the Lathrop communities are one of the conservation commission's incredibly valued land use partners. Uh, so the, the city holds conservation restrictions, which protect some of uh, Lathrop's land, which is still owned mm -hmm. in fee by them in perpetuity. So it can't be built on, it, it can't be uh, used for anything that would harm its conservation values. And invasive species really threaten native plant communities and critical habitat of uh, rare animal species. And Lathrop's model is, is really unique that the, in that they have such extensive volunteer involvement and ongoing work. And it's not just about pulling the invasive plants, but also doing a lot of education about what they are and the, the uh, threats that they pose. And they have um, amazingly created 50 acres of invasive species free <laughs> land at um at the East Hampton campus, which is which really the a fantastic achievement. Sarah, how did they remove them? Uh so it's a combination. So the volunteers do um you know hand pulling um and the the uh, work that is being funded through the CPA is to hire an, an um invasive invasive plant removal firm to uh, really spot treat with uh, right. they, small levels of uh, every herbicide. time we've had this yearly, they'll come and ask for support with CPA funding. So are they seeing a decreasing of it in that area? They are. So uh, Lathrop also provides uh, reports to the Conservation Commission and the, the CPC uh, uh, detailing the the results that their efforts are right. are making right. and and there is a real decline and it's a it's a long battle and sometimes it's <laughs> it feels like you're not making any progress but over and over they've like. seen it <laughs> well i particularly like the fact that there's education involved so that anybody who yes. wants to learn more about invasives uh, this is a good opportunity and of course the trails are open to many others uh, beyond the, the lathrop community any further questions? I just, I just want to note that uh, um, I agree that this is a great project. I can't get rid of um, the bishop weed in a 10 by 10 square foot patch of my yard. So I this is an amazing effort <laughs> um, for, uh, for these folks. So I think it's a great project. Is there a motion for a recommendation? Yes, I make a positive recommendation. I move to. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, I think we'll let's we'll give uh, this motion to Councillor Elkins and give Councillor okay. Barge the second. And uh, any further discussion on uh, positive recommendations? Nope. No, Laura, roll call, please. 
Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. And Councillor Navarre. Yes. Okay, that positive recommendation is unanimous and will go to the city council on June 20th. Next, we have 24084, an order to appropriate CPA funds for affordable housing monitor. Whereas the Office of Planning and Sustainability submitted an application for a Community Preservation Act funding for an affordable housing monitor to oversee six privately owned affordability restricted units for which a monitor is required by deed rider, whereas the project will preserve existing affordable housing units by ensuring that owners and buyers are eligible purchasers by conducting a lottery for qualified homeowners in the event of a sale, documenting eligible purchasers, and ensuring compliance with fair housing laws during a lottery. Whereas on April 17th, 2024, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend that $6,000 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, be it ordered that $6,000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Affordable Housing Monitor Project and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and the City Council. Specifically, $6,000 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. All right, Sarah, so if you could explain to us what an affordable housing sure. is. Uh, so some privately owned, uh, permanently restricted affordable units identify the city as this affordable housing monitor. Um, and the monitor has to do all of the things that are mentioned in the order, They and, and they also have to track improvements to properties um, and um, make sure that when units are sold, they're, um, all of the affordability requirements are being met and that purchasers are eligible. Um, so it, it's not it's not a lot of work, but it's it's an ongoing responsibility and not one that the city is really equipped to handle. Um, there are agencies who have a lot of these units and have a great system for tracking it. Um, it's a it's a small investment because this will be a self-sustaining program that will be funded in the future by um, portions of future sale prices, uh, but this will allow the city to hire an outside third party to do this work. So I was wondering what this was all about. I've never heard of it. The thing that I was told with like Habitat or, you know, affordable housing, just like the ice pond. Okay. We have big houses in there, expensive houses, and also affordable housing. Okay. That project I love. And what happens is the affordable housing, if an owner decides to sell it, it only can be sold affordable. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So what is this monitoring? Is this something now added on for an owner? Of affordable it, housing it, or yeah so it's not so this doesn't place any additional responsibilities on the the owners or tenants of affordable housing okay uh, it's just to make sure that the housing continues to be affordable into okay. the future right uh, and that future purchases are, are also meet those affordability requirements and that improvements to the property are, are tracked um so that the sale future sale price doesn't get affected That's great thank you so is this the first time that CPA money has been appropriated for uh, a monitor? It is. Okay. Is. So then this is startup money. It is. So that in the future, there will be a, a kind of a, a sustained uh, source of, of money that will, uh, that will be used to pay a monitor. Correct. Is that right? Okay. Yep. And uh, roughly how many hours, Sarah, does $6,000 buy of a monitor's time? I don't know. Um, so the the amount was determined by consulting with agencies who do this work and what would be appropriate for the number of units. So I believe it was identified as being $1,000 per unit. That's how it was arrived at. Okay. And that's that's sufficient to take us through the next fiscal year or it should be more than that um so that that would get us hopefully to future sales of the property future that would of, of these properties that would then um mm -hmm. put some funds back in and there are third party third party uh people who are available to do this there are. we're confident yes. that, they, that they are out there yep okay great 
Any further questions? Uh, no, don't see anybody. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a positive recommendation to the city council. Moved by Councilor Labarge, seconded by, I see Councilor Elkins. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilor Elkins for a positive recommendation on a housing monitor. Any further discussion, Laura? Roll call. Councilor Elkins. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. And Councilor Moulton. Yes. Positive recommendation is uh, unanimous. That will go to the City Council on June 20th. 24085, in order to appropriate CPA funds for local agricultural preservation restriction program. Whereas the Office of Planning and Sustainability submitted an application for Community Preservation Act funding for an agricultural preservation restriction program to provide funding to preserve Northampton farmland through the purchase of APRs on the land. Whereas the project will protect tracts of agricultural land that are important to protect as active farmland, but are not large enough or valuable enough to qualify for the Commonwealth's APR program. Whereas on April 17, 2024, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend $60,000 in Community Preservation Act funds to be used to support this project. Now, therefore, be it ordered that 60000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Office of Planning and Sustainability for Northampton Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program, and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and City Council. Specifically, 60000 be is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. Sarah. All right. Uh, so agricultural preservations, preservation restrictions work by essentially purchasing the development rights of farmland. So big parcels with a lot of development value can be protected through the federal APR program. Um, but but smaller parcels or parcels that don't have a lot of development value, such as those in the meadows that are um, limited by development by being in the floodplain, mm -hmm. don't qualify for those programs. Uh, so in the, the past, the Office of Planning and Sustainability uh, created this APR fund to have uh, readily available funds for local agricultural preservation restrictions, which do the same thing, but um, don't go through the federal program. They're still permanently restricted with an affirmative obligation to continue farming going forward uh, or to use as a match for those larger APRs. Um, and although there's no parcels assigned to this one, currently it's anticipated that they will be targeted towards parcels in the meadows. So on the APR of the land, can you explain that? Uh, so an APR is making sure that the land is permanently protected. Um, with a requirement that it be farmed. Uh, so it, it's not just that it can't be built on, but that it has to be actively used for agricultural uses. Okay. Say like with the O'Masters farm on West Farms Road, that was huge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And apparently there was involvement of preserving quite a bit of that farmland. And I know that the city... We bought some of that property in, I think the state stepped in, whatever this that says, to purchase it, making it completely conservation property where it could never be built on. Correct. Okay. I also had above where the hill is on West Hampton Road and the butts coming into their property of two of my residents who donated money to save the property from the back of their house too. Yeah, and so the um, the Omasa property is an example of one, um, you know, that's bigger yeah. that that yes. could be developed that right. does have development she value. Could, quite a bit of houses they could yeah. have in there. So, so that qualified for the the state and federal APR programs. Okay, um, but many parcels in the meadows would not. So this fund would allow either for a, a match for the those bigger programs, or for standalone protection of parcels that wouldn't qualify. Okay, what about on Florence Road with the Ravenwood Farm? It's just been bought by the family, the Day family, thank God. Now, that's under this, right? It is. That, okay, that has great. an APR on it. Okay, thank you. 
And Sarah, you work with the Agriculture Commission to make this the availability of this money known? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions, comments? Is there a motion? Councilor Jarrett, please. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, no, I, Councilor Jarrett, sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, this is great. To, I'm looking forward to seeing more farmland protected. Uh, I was curious what pressures the meadows are facing that require uh, this. You mentioned that they're, you know, the traditional development wouldn't be allowed, but uh, what 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 are the pressures that it's that the mean you know why do we need to put this into a permanent restriction? Sure. Um, so a couple of things to address there. Um, having an APR on a on a parcel can often make it available for lower income farmers or people just getting into farming um, because that development value is gone. The land is not worth as much on the open market. So that opens the door for a new farmer to be able to come in um, at a reasonable price. Uh, and the pressures in the meadows specifically are, aren't from, you know, housing development or, um, or, or other types of uses, but conversion away from agriculture to something else. Like, um, right. I know someone was looking potentially at um, creating like a big sculpture garden where people could come and visit, uh, which is a unique and, and interesting use, but one that existing farmers are thinking like, you know, I, I love my farm and, and I want it to be farmed forever. And by placing an APR on it, I can make sure that that happens and it, it doesn't get converted to something else. Thank you. Okay, now I think we're ready for uh, a motion. Uh, Council Milton, I'd move that we uh, send this to Council with a positive recommendation. I can hear. Uh, uh, Council Elkins moved a positive recommendation. I'll second that. Okay, uh, motion by Council Elkins, seconded by Council Labarge for a positive recommendation on the local APR. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, roll call, please, Laura. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Elkins. Yes. Okay. Unanimous positive recommendation on the local agricultural preservation restriction program to go to the city council on June 20th. We have uh, order number 24086 in order to appropriate 200,000 in CPA funds to the Valley Community Development Corporation for downtown affordable housing creation project. Whereas Valley Community Development Corporation submitted an application for Community Preservation Act funding for creation of an affordable housing project at 27 Crafts Avenue, where CPA funds will be used to create 20 fossil fuel free affordable units in the heart of downtown with close access to bus transportation, bike travel, or by walking to an abundance of workplace opportunities, services, and amenities. Where CPA funds will be used to leverage significant funds from a variety of other sources, including an already received $921,300 municipal vulnerability program grant and anticipated additional state grants and low income and renewable energy tax credits. Whereas on April 17th, 2024, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend that 200,000 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, be it ordered that 200,000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Downtown Affordable Housing Creation Project, and that this grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and City Council. Specifically, 200,000 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. Sarah? All right. Um, so. As I think everyone on council knows, um, the, the land right next to this building where the, the concrete stairs currently are was uh, approved by council to be surplused for affordable housing purposes. Uh, and this $200,000 will serve as the local match and demonstration of local support for the project and will open the, the door to really a kind of a shocking amount of uh, local and uh, of state and, and federal grants for the work. We're on Cross Avenue down the bottom down here. So where where the the ugly right stairs are? Yeah. Right next to this building, uh, right there. <laughs> okay. 
So small footprint, um, but 20 units. Yes, uh, Councillor Elkins. I just wanted to briefly say how much I, I really love this project. I think it's a great example of the city, um, you know, really walking the walk, um, literally, yes, in my backyard. Um, and it, it also has the advantage of being in both a model um, in terms of demonstrating our values and, and um, our commitment to affordable housing and, and then in places it's most needed. And then also, um, and it does have the advantage of, you know, where the city is the neighbor, um, which um, as these projects move through, they can sometimes be difficult. And, and the reality of construction, you know, truly in people's backyards is, is always, you know, a difficult proposition. So I'm just super proud. Um, I'm super happy about this this project and and, uh, and I'm glad that we've been supported in this way in the ways that unlocks, you know, so much additional support. So I'd be happy to support it. I would I would move to um, right, uh, send it. I couldn't hear that. But... I believe that Councillor Elkins uh, moved a positive recommendation. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councilor Elkins. I echo your comments. Uh, the, two, the two things that I find most impressive of the, about this project is the location, the heart of downtown, uh, and, and, a, and a spot where, uh, it, it, as the order states, it is easy to get to many, many things, uh, uh, potential places of employment, shopping, transportation, and so forth. Uh, the other thing that is so impressive, as uh, as Sarah, I believe, labeled it a shocking amount of uh, leveraging, uh, as she said at the beginning, all of the, the projects in total will leverage uh, over $22 million. This one in particular, I think, is a great example of yeah. how a, a $100,000 appropriation is going to reap the benefits of, of much more. So uh, I, too, support this. Any further discussion? Uh, uh, roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Saw her lips move. Say it's hard to hear it. I know. Yes. Okay. That uh, is a, a unanimous positive recommendation on the downtown affordable housing creation project. Go to the city council on June 20th. Uh, next, we have uh 24087 in order to appropriate cpa funds to historic northampton for parsons and shepherd house project whereas historic northampton submitted a cpa application for work to complete engineering and architectural examinations to the parsons and shepherd houses whereas the studies will use archaeology protocol and historical analytic techniques to yield important information about one of northampton's oldest structures Whereas the project has widespread public support and is a necessary step toward reopening the Parsons House to the public. Whereas on April 17th, 2024, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend that $47,104 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support the project. Now, therefore, be it ordered that 47104 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to Historic Northampton, Inc. for the Parsons and Shepherd House project, and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and the City Council. Specifically, $47,104 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. And Sarah, I believe that this continues um, some uh, uh, rather, you know, some support that has been uh, uh, pretty. Uh, that, that, that the city has offered over a period of time to Historic Northampton. Yes. Um, so Historic Northampton uh, has a historic preservation restriction on it, which ensures that um, any major work undertaken will need to be approved by the city's historical commission prior to being done. And that was a requirement of the first uh, CPA funding that was done Boy, maybe almost twenty, you know, almost twenty years ago at this point. Um, and historic Northampton has come in many times over the years for projects that it, that um, are address a, a multitude of items on their campus and with their collections. 
And they came to the CPC in the fall with a combined application for their clothing coll collection preservation and this work. Uh, at that time, the CPC only recommended a partial funding of, of just what they saw as the most critical um, element of that, which was the uh, historic clothing preservation. Um, but they were able to um, sort of backfill and, and recommend funding for the rest of it at this point. Okay. Um, and Historic Northampton really does a fantastic job of you know, telling the story of uh, the history of Northampton and really making history come alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's seen through the um, the barn project, which has really created a, you know, a, a living, usable space uh, out of something that hadn't been before. And the Community Preservation Committee was especially excited about the possibility of seeing Parsons House open to the public. Okay. Um, Parsons House is one of the oldest residences in the city, and most people have never had the opportunity to be in it. Um, and um, the CPC was looking forward to seeing that change in the future with this funding. How long is it going to go ahead and take and finish this project? Uh, to actually get the Parsons House open. This is the initial work, um, but uh, Lori and Betty at Historic Northampton, the co-executive directors, were, were planning um, for their, their tenants vacating that space and are doing the groundwork now to get it open as soon as possible. Um, I don't I don't know how long that is. Because I know this is great be. concerns of some of the antique clothing that they have in there. Yeah, um, the CP, CPC funding um, approved by council has allowed historic Northampton not only to do work on their buildings, uh, which this project addresses, but really make sure that their collections are preserved. Thank you. I would like to make a positive recommendation to Full City Council. Okay, okay. moved by Council LaBarge. Sec seconded by Second. Council Elkins. Um, I'll, I'll just add that, uh, yeah, we've seen a terrific revival at Historic Northampton in recent years, and uh, it's that's very fortunate because it's just a, a tremendous number of artifacts that are there and uh, that really tell a story about um, about the community and and it, its people. And I th I've attended a couple of events at the, at the barn. It's another great venue down in that section of downtown and. Hopefully we'll we'll see a reopened Parsons House in in the coming years. So I right. do support this. Any further discussion? Nope. Okay, Laura, roll call, please, on a positive recommendation. Councillor Elkins. Well. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. Unanimous positive recommendation to go to the City Council on June twentieth. And then finally, we have uh, 24088 in order to appropriate CPS, sorry, CPA funds to the Office of Planning and Sustainability for a downtown park design. Whereas the Office of Planning and Sustainability submitted an application for Community Preservation Act funding to complete design of a small park on Main Street, whereas the design will include modification of the space from the art kiosk to Center Street to create a public speaking and resting landscape space that accommodates existing mature shade trees, whereas the project meets the goals of the Sustainable Northampton Plan and the open space recreation and multi-use trail plans by use of open space and recreation to enhance the downtown center. Whereas on April 17th, 2024, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend 77,000 in CPA funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, be it ordered the 77,000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the Office of Planning and Sustainability for the downtown park design project at First Churches, and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee the mayor and city council. Uh, specifically, 77,000 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. Uh, so Sarah, on this one, if you could address both, is there additional money that is has been secured or is needed? And also what is the timing on creation of this park? Sure, uh, so this is being presented by the Office of Planning and Sustainability now. Um, to allow the, the park design work to move forward in conjunction with uh, the picture Main Street work. And this will allow for the design of a reinvigorated park at First Churches. 
that area is not part of the street layout, so is not included in the picture Main Street work. Okay. Um, but but will it will become expanded a, as part of the picture Main Street design. Um, so having a, a design ready to move forward um, will make sense and and a, with the timing of uh, the Main Street redesign work. Can you explain exactly the location? Yes, you know where the frog is. The frog, that, so it's it's where the frog is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the the area the area directly in front of First Churches, um, which is permanently protected open space, um, but hasn't been redesigned or um, redone in, in quite a number of years. To Center Street. Yeah. Uh, and Sarah, my question about uh, is there addition? This is design money, correct? There is. This is yes. And, and is there additional money that that is is needed for the actual work on the on the park? Yeah. Um, so this doesn't include any construction work, but this is full engineering designs, and um, additional construction funding would need to be secured once the the designs are in place. Okay, and the and the the reason it's coming forward now is so that it is done as as at the same time as Picture Main Street, so that they complement each other. Correct. Is that correct. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to put it in my head exactly the location of this design. Uh, there's the it's basically a sitting area now. Um, oh. People hang out there. They you know they they might read a book eat their lunch gotcha. um okay there's there's a couple larger shade trees um but it, it's it will become larger as part of the picture main street design um gotcha. and gotcha the, <laughs> and uh planning and sustainability put this forward to to allow um you know a, a well thought out design okay thank you i got it now <laughs> uh councillor jarrett thank you does this extend all the way to gothic street uh i i'll bring i i'll look that up i'll bring a map of this to council so that everybody can it can envision it more clearly um okay yeah i looked in the supporting materials and it it looked like there were two parcels and one of them uh extends like in front of urban outfitters and that extended all the way to gothic street so i, I would appreciate clarity on that sure yeah I, I i can bring that to the full council meeting i i believe it's just the area right in front of first churches but not all the way to gothic so okay. from the from the art kiosk um uh, along the first church's frontage okay thank you yeah so the art I'm confused with that the, the art kiosk is kind of at the edge of the of the urban outfitters first churches yeah property yep uh, so it might not extend all the way to Gothic, but yes, I, I believe it does not. But okay. I will. So if you could, if you could bring a, some kind of a design or map to the council on June twentieth, be appreciated. Any further questions about this? Is there a motion? Second. Okay, positive recommendation moved by. Uh, Councillor Elkins and uh, seconded by Councillor Barge. Any further discussion? Okay, roll call, Laura, please. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Elkins. Yes. That uh, also has unanimous positive recommendation to go to the City Council on June 20th. That concludes the nine orders for CPA projects for the spring round. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah, for being yes. here and explaining thank you very much appreciate it and we'll see you on let me know what this little park was going <laughs> we'll see you on june 20th thank you sarah thank you so um i do have one uh, uh one additional uh piece of new business that i'd like to discuss with uh with councillors labarge and, and elkins um mm -hmm. Uh, I conferred yesterday with uh, Council President Jarrett, and we have decided that it is prudent for us to bring the uh, recommendation from the Finance Committee on the uh, the order to uh, place a Proposition 2.5 override on the uh, November ballot. Uh, we had, we had, we had, we had thought 
uh, initially that uh, we didn't need to bring it forward until uh, July 11th back to the council, and I had not put it on tonight's agenda because I had hoped to uh, discuss it at a time when council uh, Councilor Mayori mm -hmm. would be available. But uh, to uh, uh, we we uh, we believe Councilor Jarrett and I believe that uh, in case there's a delay in voting on this on June 20th to the July 11th meeting, that that needs to be the um, the second of, of the meetings that it could be voted on. That we. We could not bring it forward on July 11th and then have, have it delayed until August because that would miss the state's deadline for placing uh, the order or the uh, the uh, question on the ballot. So my, my proposal uh, is to do this next week. Um, and I've talked to Councilor Maiori. She, she will not be available um, to attend this meeting um, next week, early in the week, uh, since we have a special meeting of the full council at 745 on Monday, uh, I had uh, I had thought that perhaps if everyone is available, we could convene at 430. Uh, that would allow the already scheduled meeting of the of Community Resources Committee to go ahead at 530 and if any of their members wanted to participate in the discussion about the placement of the override on the ballot uh, they could do that so the question is are the two of you available at 430 on monday that would be a remote meeting no yeah was that a yes yes that's a yes i already told you i was fine with that you're so fine with that so far Okay. And I'm worried because if something does occur that you wouldn't have a quorum. That is correct. But you know, we can't predict. So we'll make this uh we'll we'll, uh, we'll post the meeting and if something happens, we'll have to deal with it. And I uh Laura is uh willing to take on uh three consecutive meetings on Monday. Yes. Uh, I, I talked to the mayor today, and she is also available at 430. So okay. I will ask that she plan to attend this meeting. It will be a remote meeting. Uh, and Laura, the only order, the only business uh, on the agenda for that meeting will be the order um, to uh, place the override on the ballot that was referred to us from the council on June 6th. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be strictly here. We're not going to be able to do Zoom. No, no, no. The, the opposite, Council LaBarge. It's remote oh, wow. only. At the 431? Yes. And also on our special meeting that we're having at yes. Order of Eight, that is okay. Zoom. That, to that's us. my understanding at this point. That was intended to be a remote only meeting. Oh. Yes. Okay. okay. We will get that meeting posted then for finance by uh, the end of the day. Today's Tuesday, so the end of the day, Thursday. Okay. Because I talked with Pam about that on the override, and she said she had to get it into the committee in Boston for August. Yes. that That's why uh, we think it's prudent to get it to the council on th on the next meeting on June 20th in case there's a delay. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Any further new business tonight? No. Then I think a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. I hear uh, Councillor Elkins up there uh, moving to adjourn, seconded by Councillor Barch. Uh, no it's discussion. Roll call, Laura, please. Councillor Bolton. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. And Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Okay, we are adjourned at uh, 738. Okay. And uh, thank you. Thank you all for being here.